Hey guys, welcome back to Stay True TV. Another day on the ski build. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab the crankcase and the exhaust pipe, because they've both got some damage that needs welded up. We're gonna take them, chuck them through the sandblaster and get the areas that are required cleaning, cleaned up. And then I've got a mate that's coming around. We're gonna set up my TIG. He's gonna give me a bit of a lesson on how to do aluminium welding. And he's gonna weld up the case and the pipe for me. So we can continue on, get the stuff sandblasted and sent off to the powder coaters. Let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is go and remove this mess of liquid steel. So as you can see, there's a fair bit of corrosion in the base of this. So when I first got it years ago, the motor was completely seized. The people that owned it, they had tipped it or something and it filled up with water and they didn't do anything about it. So when I had to get this thing apart, it was solid. So I actually ended up having to cut con rods and everything to get it out. And uh, yeah, bought no crankshaft, piston rings, but, uh, sleeves for the cylinders had to machine get all the sleeves machined and everything else back then and uh, it hasn't really changed since we've done it last time but we are going to get a few repairs done on it this time so hopefully it should, should look a bit better when it goes back together guys so I'm here with me mate Dolphy he's just come and worked some wonders I pretty much gave him a turd and told him to polish it and he'd done exactly that he's gone and sorted our welding problems out the cracks were pretty hard there was a lot of rubbish and stuff inside it apparently it's pretty normal with marine equipment but Dolph's gone ahead and got it all sorted for us now it's up to me to go ahead and clean it all up and get it good to go good on you Charlie. <laughs> all right guys it's been a couple of days we had Dolph here He's done repairs on the casings and stuff. Everything's looking fantastic. Now we've got to go ahead and get all the paint off it. And then just clean up the welds. Make them look a bit tidier. And we should be sweet. Usually I just chuck the parts in my sandblaster. Get it all off. But I was doing a bit of research the other day. They reckon using paint stripper on it. And then just giving it a good old blast over. 
gets rid of the paint, then I'll just be able to bring it back and just go over nice and lightly with the sandblast to get it all ready for powder coating. That should be sweet. So we're going to give it a crack and see how it goes. So let's go and load this stuff up and get out of here. Alright guys, so we're at the car bar, we've got all our parts sorted out here. I'm using this stuff here, it's an industrial paint stripper. It's the only stuff I could find in the can in Wyler. So we're going to go ahead and give it a crack. So apparently we put it on, leave it for a few minutes, three, four minutes. Then we just blast it off and then it's crushed, it should be sweet. So let's see what happens. Alright guys, so there they are, we've gone ahead and got it all done, it's all sorted, it didn't really turn out as well as I thought it was going to, on the video that I watched, the guy was using like an aviation paint stripper which could make the difference, might have been a lot stronger, I thought the stuff that I used was being industrial, I thought that would do a good job. Didn't do too bad, it's definitely thinned the paint out, so it should be a lot easier for the sandblaster to handle the rest anyway. But, that is what it is. Thought we'd give it a crack, see how it turned out, and show you guys how it went, but not as good as what we thought. On that note, let's go and uh, do some sandblasting. Alright guys, it does take a fair bit of time to do the sandblast with my little unit. Need to get a bigger tank. But we've gone ahead and we've done all the bits that need to be powder coated black. Except for our electrical box, we've done a bit of clean up on the weld, but we want to find out whether we can actually use epoxy on it and just clean it up a little bit more, make it look a bit tidy, and then once powder coated it should look sweet. As for now, we've got the rest of the bits and pieces. The actual crankcase itself turned out not too bad, so I'm not too fussed about it because it's sitting right at the bottom and it's nice and nice tidy little bit of weld. So might, when we get it back, we'll just give it a bit of a clean up in the journal underneath inside the crankcase, make sure that's nice and tidy so it's not hitting the crank or anything like that. Uh, we're going to go take this to Dan's powder coating now and drop it off. Alright guys, so we've just finished sandblasting the rest of the bits and pieces. So most of them bits and pieces there are getting done a different colour to the rest of the motor. Apart from this one here, this will be getting done black. 
As you can see where we had the weld repairs, as my mate Dolph that welded them up did explain to me, the materials that we're using here, because they're marine, they get a lot of impurities in, in, into the aluminium, which does cause a lot of trouble when you come to welding aluminium, especially this kind of stuff here. So there was a lot of impurities coming out of the metal as he was welding it up. So there, there was a couple of pinholes and stuff through it that I was a bit worried about. So what we've gone and done, we've just gone and grabbed a bit of JV weld over it, put it over. So fingers crossed this will work, but in saying that, it's only doing little pinholes. So what we'll do tomorrow when this is all hardened up, we'll come back, sand it all back nicely, and it should be nice and sweet. As for now, it's getting pretty late tonight, I'll say. We got a newborn baby at home, hence why I took a week out. That's why this video is taking a bit longer to t come out. So I am kind of juggling, being inside, looking after the wife, looking after the baby. When they go to sleep, jump out of the shed, start getting some stuff done out here. So it's going to take a little bit longer than usual, but it should be sweet. Once we get all into the swing of things and everything, should go back to normal. Should be able to start getting these projects cranking. As for now though, we'll be back tomorrow, sort a bit more stuff out on this ski. So there you go, we've got the rest of the stuff sandblasted, ready to go to the powder coater. As you've seen, we did have a couple of minor repairs just to do one on the electrical box. And we did one on the bottom of the exhaust there. There was just a couple of pinholes that I was a little bit worried about where the welding was done. But should be pretty good like that. We've just gone and put some JB Weld in there, let it dry, sanded it back nice, made it look sweet. We've gone and cleaned up the inside of here. We've got a new seal on the way for that. So hopefully that'll be here soon. Everything should be pretty sweet. We're gonna get this stuff to the powder coater. We also went ahead and just took care of these here holes. So we drilled them out and re-tapped them. So the temperature sender is gonna be bolted with two bolts this time around. So when I bought it, there was one snapped off and I just never went ahead and tried getting that bolt out. And the same with this one here. The electrical box took care of this hole here and this hole here so we've tapped them out we've got screws run them all in made sure it's all thin fantastic as you can see i've put a bit of jb weld on the inside of this as well just smeared it in just for a bit of extra backup not really caring about cleaning that section up because no one's going to see that anyway and there's that much wiring and stuff that goes inside that it's just going to cover it all up no one's going to know that even that's even there main concern was the outside here making that look nice and tidy and clean and flush. So I think we've done a pretty good job considering we had weld coming all around here, around here. We've gone and cleaned it all up nice and tidy, bogged it up with JB Weld, just wherever there was a bit of pitting and stuff. And then we've just gone and sanded the back all nicely. Should powder coat over quite good. Fingers crossed, look really nice. Now we have been held up a little bit, so as you know, I did take the, the casings to the powder coater, so we did get them back. For what reason? Well, the powder coat, the guy that does the powder coat, Dan, went to do the uh, preheat on this, and he just gave it a bit of a, went to give it a bit of a clean up and stuff, and he had a bit of cleaning solution, and he put it in where the weld is, and just under there, as you can see, it's leaking. So I could have gone ahead and JB welded 
the casing up as well but with the actual casing since that's where the mixture and everything's getting done I didn't want to chance it so we have gone ahead and outsourced another case a set of cases for it pretty pricey but in saying that I didn't want to take the chance of it failing a little bit down the track with the exhaust if that fails that's an easy thing just three bolts a couple of couple of hose clamps we can rip that thing out get it sorted but I have seen in videos that you can use JB Weld get a powder coat and she'll be sweet so I've got a lot of faith in JB Weld I've used it in a few jobs now and it's been fantastic so dries really hard does a good job now we have got a fair few bits and pieces come through as well so we'll go and source them out I'll show you what we got Alright, so check it out guys, we've got a box of bits and pieces here, we've gone and ordered. First up we've got, a, we've got our piston rings, so we've got three sets of piston rings. Now the pistons themselves and the barrel are still in good condition. They've probably only got about 40 hours worth of work on them anyway, so they're pretty good. But I thought while we've got it apart, we'll go ahead and re-ring it anyway, get it sorted. Got ourselves a new fuel filter when we get all the fuel system back in. New set of needle bearings for all gudgeons. Three complete carby rebuild kits. Three needle and seat setups for the carbies. And we've gone ahead and ordered one of these as well. Now this is a jet pump wearing. Now the reason I've gone and ordered this. All right, so right here, we've got the shaft that goes through to the jet pump. Now, that should spin nice and freely. As you can see, it spins nice and freely, but then it locks up. Now you can feel that is actually scratching onto the wear, wearing. Now I've done it once before, and I took it out and chucked it up in the lathe and just gave it a nice bit of a bit of an emery, and it done the job. But I thought this time I'm gonna take care of it properly. Bought the proper wearing. And we'll sort that out while we've got this thing apart. So what we're going to do is rip it out. I'm not sure, 100% sure how this works yet. Whether the sleeve in the original pump pops out. Or we've got a machine it out size and then press that one in. But we've got the sleeve so we can take care of that while we've got it apart. Cases that I've bought, they look like nearly brand new. Photos look spectacular. They are off a wrecked vehicle, obviously. Being the age they are. One, they're pretty hard to come by now. Actually, just about any any of the parts for this ski to come by in Australia seem to be just about a struggle. So anything that I'm sourcing pretty much has to come from the States, unfortunately. So there is a bit of time wait. Looking nearly a month up to, they reckon, to get it here. But it is what it is. So while we're waiting on the cases, we've still got plenty of stuff to do. We can pull that gem pump out. We can sort that out. We can do the clean up inside the hull. We can get all that cleaned up. Make everything look nice, get it all ready. The rest of the stuff's still going to go to the powder coater. He's going to still powder coat the bits and pieces that we have got that are all good. Get them sorted out. So then it's just a matter of waiting for them cases, get them blasted, send them over, get them powder coated, and then we can start smashing this thing back together. Should be sweet. So there's a few more issues than I actually anticipated with this thing. We have got new grab handles on the way. Did manage to source them suckers. They were hard to find. As you can see, these things last no, no time at all. It just breaks off. I just don't want that. I just realized we've got one more thing to do on this case here. That there is a hole. This here is a grease line or grease fitting. So this fitting here was just pressed in there. Was pressed in pretty well to supply grease. But what I was thinking I might do, we're gonna remove this from the brass fitting. Then we're going to make a fitting that's going to tap into this one here, tap into this one here, we should be sweet.
go. So a nice little fitting there. I reckon I'll probably leave that on there so that gets powder coated when the rest of it gets powder coated and it should look sweet. Now I'm thinking the bottom of these, I'll remove that so I can sandblast that. May as well send that away too. And also I'm thinking maybe we'll get these caps here colour coated as well. So we'll go and remove them now, get them ready so we can take them to the powder coat as well. Fingers crossed, she'll come up really sweet. Alright, there we are. Everything sandblasted, ready to rock and roll. We'll get them to Dan's powder coating. He'll take care of them from here. All we need to worry about is when the new cases get here, we'll get them blasted, send them over, and we've got our motor. Start putting some stuff together. Should be sweet. Alright guys, so on that note, we're going to call that a wrap for this video. We managed to get a fair bit done. We got the repairs done on the exhaust, the electrical box. We did get the casings done, but unfortunately that didn't work out, or it did. But I didn't want to take the chance of using the liquid metal to try and patch the little tiny pit holes in it. So we've gone ahead and ordered a new one of those. So that should be here, fingers crossed, very shortly. Everything's being packed up, sent away to Dan's powder coating in Wyala. Should be really cool to see that stuff come back and see how it all turns out. Probably in the next video, we're probably going to rip that jet pump out and have a look at fitting this wearing. Never done it before. Haven't really looked into how it's done yet. All I know is there was a wear ring there, so it was a good opportunity to have a crack at it. And it'll be perfect on the channel. You guys can follow us along and work it out with us. See how we go. And then you know if you want to do it yourself, you'll be able to have a crack at it. Really excited about seeing this thing going back together and seeing how it looks. Got some pretty big thoughts in my head on how this thing's going to come up and it should look pretty sweet by the time it's all back together. Still got a lot of clean up to do inside the hull and stuff. And again, I'd like to say thank you for all the love and support to the channel. We really do appreciate you taking your time and watching our videos. If you're enjoying the content that we're providing, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, set your notifications for upcoming videos, hit that like button, any comments down below, any thoughts or ideas for the videos that you could give me would be absolutely fantastic. Stay safe and we'll catch you next time.